So with that, let's get started. Um, how many of you have access to the Pamelo supercomputer? Okay, all of you. Ah, close to all of you. So uh, for this workshop tutorial and also for future session, um, I'd like to introduce um, the um, a new product that the CD Group have produced here at Clemson. And actually, the two architects of that integration is sitting right up there in purple shirt, very Clemson. -y. Um, you can log on. So traditionally, you have worked with Palmetto as a command line interface. You have to have a shell script. You have to download and install either Secure Shell, or if you have a Mac or Linux, you have to go and interact with Palmetto through command line. Um, so we have implemented uh, what we call um, the Jupyter Hub interface. So basically, this allows you to start to interact with the supercomputer via a web browser. So you can start to, instead of having to bring up a shell and request resources from a command line shell, you can start to interact with Pimeco via browser. So go ahead and put in, uh, put in this URL on the laptop and hit enter and you should see something similar to actually something similar to this and again put up a green sticker if you can get to this place put up a red sticker if you cannot and you need help go ahead and click on start my server um, so as you can see, um, at this stage we have most of the ten standard options for requesting notes from the Pamelo supercomputer. Um, as we start to make the implementation of this become more stable, we will include additional configuration from the PBS queue. So let's go ahead and ask for two resources, eight core eight. Um, 8 gig of RAM, no CPU, and let's say 4 hours of full time, and put it into the work queue, and just click spawn. So, if your job, uh, if your allocation is um, granted, you should see something similar to this. This is your, um, this is your home directly on Camino. Go ahead and put uh, go ahead and put up the green sticker if you are at this stage. So at this stage, um, you should not see any of this. What you can see when you click new, you can only see the two options: Python, Anaconda two for Python two, and Anaconda for Python three. And also, you can have new text file, folder, and terminal options. So this is why I said that. Uh, even if you are not using Python explicitly, having access to JupyterHub allows you to be able to interact with the system via, you don't have to rely on the software anymore, particularly those of you who use Windows machine. Um, you just click on terminal and it will bring you to the head node of the node that you have reserved. And if you run QStat, ANU, and type in your username, the job that you just requested should show up. Can you repeat the parameters that we use? Oh, the parameter set. Um, select equal to two, number of core equal to eight, uh, memory equal to eight gig, and four hour water. Uh, no, don't, don't put in the number of GPU. Um, after you have this, go ahead and click on new and open and click on terminal. That will bring up an additional web tab. And from here, you have an embedded terminal within this web browser. All right, so let's leave the terminal there for the moment and get back to lecture mode. 
Okay, so um, computing hardware have developed significantly over time. We started out with old machine with a single core, and then Intel come out with CPU with multiple cores. Uh, we start to be able to connect computers together, and then connecting people connect computers from different locations together. And now everybody is so happy with cloud computing. So anything going from multiple core and up should be able to support parallel computing applications. So this basically means that pretty much any um, computing platform that you have access to nowadays have the ability to support parallelization. Um, among this, the fact that for this particular setting, so for example, let's say you have a single computer, so multiple core within the computer will, be, will work with the same memory access, um, so we call this memory, memory computing. Anything that requires multiple computers connected together are counted as distributed memory system. And MPI is designed to support distributed memory system. Um, I'm not talking about cloud computing here because technically cloud computing just provides an abstraction so that you can easily deploy um, cluster computing and grid computing setup um, on a set of computers from different locations. So distributed computing memory system, each of the computing processes handle it, uh, their own memory and they have to communicate with one another to accomplish a complete task that would not have been possible otherwise. So the difference between this and the typical, for example, if some of you are well versed in Python, you know that they, Python has library to support multi-threading. This is different, this with the memory system is different from multi-threading. The advantage of this with the memory system is that it can scale very well. You just need to add, let's say you have a computer. If you want to increase the number of core, you have to buy a new CPU. Or you can have to upgrade that. For this with the system, you can just buy another computer, computer and just add to that. Um, it can support community part, and you can add computer from all different types. And as long as they are on the network, it is possible to combine them into the primary group of computer and make them contribute to the work. So in distributed uh, computing, the standard technique to support uh, parallelization is called message passing. So the programming model is, it is called message passing and it is implemented by MPI. It is the standardized message passing library. So basically within the message passing programming model, all the processes communicate via messages. So anything you want to have two process talking to each other or you want to have one process assigning tasks to another, that basically means that one is sending the message to another. And within that message, it can have raw data or it can have signal and acknowledgement for the message recipient in order to enable the workflow. Um, a brief history of MPI. Um, in the early 80s, everybody was trying to do parallel computing. All the, um, all the major national labs, all the major company has their own standard on how to do message passing. And everybody realized that that is not the way to go. 